Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet, which is Google and YouTube, they all come to the same political persuasion and they all have the ability to pinch the valve and close that shut off the tap of information. Hello there, happy Thanksgiving. If you think that's racist, this isn't the video for you. Quick warning, you may hear some squeaking. Hopper and Betty are, are playing with some toys around, so I apologize. This is a little bit raw. It'll mostly be me talking and a screen recording from my iPhone. Uh, it's a little reminiscent of the Alexa video that uh, I think we did on Thanksgiving, yeah, right before Black Friday, two years ago. Um, and I noticed something with my iPhone that was equally disconcerting. So before we get to that question of the day, you know, it's very easy to see inherent biases on, on YouTube or Alexa, uh, Google, right? We sort of think of these as platforms, software, but sometimes it's a little bit harder to pick up if it's baked into the entire ecosystem of your smartphone. A lot of people have iPhones, so that's what I'm working with today, but I'm, I'm sure it happens on Android too. And I know there's software, there's a bunch of stuff going on here, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just referring to it as smartphone. Hopper, come here, buddy, come here. That's okay, Hopper's just walking around. Uh, I apologize. So uh, my question to you is, have you seen this with your device? How egregious has it gotten? And I would like for you to conduct some of these experiments that I'm about to show you uh, and comment below or send me your tweets at S Crowder uh, and show me your results because I am concerned. So we'll start off with a couple of things, right? Right off the bat, I don't know if you've seen these, but um, the new gender neutral emojis, the, the families, this isn't a big deal. So I'm gonna try and do this in sort of ascending order of a hopper. He's not, you see, even he doesn't like the iPhone. He's not a big fan of it, apparently. Apparently he's an Android guy. But uh, I'm gonna send these to my wife because she's the only one who I can send these emojis to. You have two dads and two moms, as opposed to a traditional family. They change these apps, uh, the, these uh, emojis proactively, which wouldn't seem like it matters until you realize that they changed some emojis because people thought that they were racially insensitive, you know, they thought that they were too white, people weren't represented equally enough. So activists have determined that emojis are uh, a political stand that they want to make. By its own, may not seem like a big deal, but Apple knows that all of your kids are using smartphones. And that brings us though to something, you know, apps. And um, I think a lot of you know that there are some biases with apps, right? There've been a lot of conservative apps that have been banned uh, on the App Store, uh, on the iPhone. I sound like an old person. On the App Store, on the iPhone. That's the one with email, correct? But, um, so that's nothing new. And again, the totality of this, when you add it up, when we get to Apple News, I think you'll agree it's pretty disturbing. Uh, apps that have been banned, obviously InfoWars. Um, you have a lot of Christian apps that have been banned from the App Store. Pro-life organizations, Human Coalition, uh, Exodus is one of them. And something else, so you say, well, okay, maybe they just disagree with them because they have some kind of religious content. Fine. Uh, they also have some apps that have been banned. Gab, which is a free speech platform, right? It's trying to compete with other social media platforms. That's banned, as well as applications that were used by the Hong Kong protesters. So I don't really know how you can justify that, especially if we're talking about a more open and free society and supporting the downtrodden, right, the underdog. How do you ban apps that were being used to mobilize freedom activists, protesters in Hong Kong. So all of those have been banned from the App Store. But, and uh, let me just do this right now, I'll do this with a screen capture. If I search Planned Parenthood, however, look at that. Right there, I have a screen grab, but just so you can see, there's, there's nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> Must have picked the wrong hat. Planned Parenthood shows up Chinese protesters, well, Hong Kong protesters. I know I'm gonna get flack for that. Nothing. And that brings me to the next point, uh, the podcasts, right, the app for podcasts. We all know that, uh, you know, InfoWars, Alex Jones was banned from podcasts. But here's the thing. He was banned for hate speech, for violating hate speech guidelines. It wasn't for conspiratorial content, didn't have anything to do with Sandy Hook. And I, by the way, I disagree with Alex Jones on a whole lot, and I understand that you may. But the reason he was removed was for hate speech. Let's contrast that with pro-violent Antifa activist podcasts like, uh, is it, uh, what's this one, Johnny Boy? It's going down. It's going down, that's right, it's going down. There was another one that's something like a Chapo House, Chapo, I don't know. They endorse Antifa violence, by the way. That's, that's, that's all I know. There we go. Oh, if we search It's Going Down on the podcast app, and lest you think I exaggerate, uh, you can search that yourself and see the endorsement of Antifa violence brutally beating in people's heads. It's fun for the whole family. Happy Thanksgiving. 
And finally, that brings me here to the, what I think is most concerning is Apple News, especially when you see that so many more Americans are getting their news aggregated from Apple News, and they have more and more control over the flow of information. Now, I want to be really clear about something. Before you say, well, that's just an algorithm. It's based on your favorites. I do use Apple News every day. I know you think I have to change political affiliation. It's one of the tools that I use. Okay, I also read HuffPo and Salon every day because I do it so you don't have to. That being said, what we did here uh, on a new phone, it was a new phone, a complete, a completely clean slate, no subscriptions, no searches, we didn't favorite, we didn't share any articles. So all we did was set up Apple News as a blank slate on a new phone, and I want to show you what it is that popped up. Um, far and away, far and away during this entire time, for three weeks we monitored it, was the Trump impeachment story, all coming up from left-wing news sources. So let me bring this up right here. I had to kind of screen grab them as they came in. Uh, impeachment reaches decision stages. Democrats review evidence. There we go. That's the very first thing that pops up. And I would get these notifications all the time. They would just pop up. And it all, I almost thought they were repeat titles. Uh, State Department files sh uh, show Giuliani Pompeo contact before Ukraine's ambassador visit. Next one here. Democrats have wrapped their public case on impeachment. What comes next? Who? Impeachment surprises boost Dems. This comes from Politico. But Republican resistance holds. All right, next story, top news. Five key things we learned from Gordon Sunland. Very nice. Uh, next top stories. These are all popping up on my phone. By the, This is what's so disturbing. This is pumped to your phone, right? You get a notification. Hey, here's a news alert. And then if you swipe right, you just have this control panel, I guess is what it's called, that just has a list of top stories for three weeks. They were all impeachment. They were all Trump impeachment, Ukraine, or Russia scandal, which, by the way, pick a lane. Is it Trump or is it Ukraine? They don't really like each other. Next one, impeachment witness. Ukraine gradually came to understand that they were being asked to do. Don't have the rest of the title. Another one, impeachment probe turns to Trump ally at the heart of the Ukraine. Another one, witness says he overheard Trump demand Ukrainian investigation of Biden's. Another one, Trump ousted Yovanovitch. Now she'll tell her story. Next one, I don't care if I pronounce it right. It's close to Thanksgiving and I'm tired. Public impeachment hearings start today. How we got here, what happens next? Next one, DACA finally lands the Supreme Court after Trump's year long battle. Next one, Republicans shrug off growing evidence, stand with Trump against impeachment. Next one, here's the biggest news you missed this weekend. Uh, and then uh, House Intelligence Committee evidence of Trump's extortion screen. So that one I will give you. The very first thing was the biggest news you missed this weekend, which when I clicked it, it was about impeachment. But two titles down, impeachment is in there. So I think the point remains, if you want to nitpick, you're the dick. Uh, next one. Uh, that's the same one. Uh, Republicans attempt to move impeachment inquiry away from Trump. Next one. White House broke from the normal process handling Trump-Ukraine call, witness said. Next one. Trump rails against Democrats, impeachment inquiry, and growing body of evidence. Keep in mind, these are all being pumped directly to my home screen every day. I did this test so that you wouldn't have to, but here's the thing I want you to, and I want you to send your comments to me uh, on YouTube or on Twitter. I want everyone to do this. Wipe everything clean and try this. Uh, next one, public impeachment hearings will begin next week, House says. Next one, key diplomat changes testimony and admits quid pro quo with Ukraine. Now, you know, I'm not even gonna go through anymore. Here's what I do want you to understand, we finally added this up, uh, actually a brilliant researcher, Reg, into a spreadsheet to look at the percentage of stories that were coming in. Uh, they were overwhelmingly uh, impeachment oriented. And the only conservative news source, the only one that was allowed uh, at all, as we saw in Apple News, was Fox News. And keep in mind, throughout the entirety of these three weeks, we only received two stories from Fox News, I believe. None of them were political, mind you. The most political one was about a guy stabbing a balloon that was a Trump baby. We can bring it up here and you can determine for yourselves if it's political. There was no balance in the sense of they were talking about impeachment. They were talking about the Donald Trump and the Ukraine scandal. But there was no balance. There was no talking about Hunter Biden. There was no talking about whatever's been going on with Joe Biden. There was no talking about the flubs with any of the Democratic presidential candidates. There's been no talking about the inherent stories that were later on media bias or Jeffrey Epstein, you know, James O'Keefe. You'd think that would. None of those were up there. And the only conservative news source that was allowed, Fox News, none of their political stories were put into my feed. Think of that for a second. If you're getting hundreds and hundreds of articles listed, pumped to the home screen of your phone, day in and day out, and none of them are coming from a balanced news source. And I bring this up, you know, I, I don't want to fear monger. Um, I think there's a real silver lining. Generation Z is more, in spite of all of this, Generation Z is more conservative than millennials or baby boomers at this point in their generation. Uh, we see demographic shifts taking place that we haven't seen before. There really is a bright future for America if we do our work. That being said, it really is pretty disturbing when you add all of this up. Uh, I mean, you look at Twitter banning political ads. 
okay, that seems pretty balanced until you realize that they allow media ads, right? So ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, they can all run ads. It's fine. Celebrities can run ads. Um, of course, publications can run ads, just not politicians. You look at Google and YouTube, what we've been fighting over there, obviously been going on for a long time. Google and YouTube have specifically changed their guidelines by and large because of what we've done, because of what we've talked about and showcased as far as search issues going on with Tulsi Gabbard. But uh, we should, a, a late night show shouldn't be the ones to have to catch them. Uh, you see what's been happening, of course, with Google manipulating search results. You know, we talk about $3,000 of, of Russian advertising affecting the election. Do you have any idea how many votes can be swayed by Google and YouTube alone? Think about that for a second. And last, uh, two years ago when we did the Alexa video, some people thought we were faking it because we asked the Alexa, the Alexa in our house, I have less sound like an old person, the, uh, the Alexas. Asked him who Muhammad was. He was the holiest of prophets. Peace be upon him. Jesus Christ. It didn't know the answer to it. Some people said that we were faking because by the very next Monday, the algorithms that determined the answers had changed and all of a sudden it was giving you an answer as to who Jesus Christ was, right? Some people thought we faked it because by the time they asked him a question, three days later, Amazon had changed it. I say that because there's a silver lining. We can affect change. We just have to highlight where we see foul play and make sure to make as much noise about it as possible. That's why I really want to see some, run this experiment. Again, you have to wipe everything clean so it's not going, that excuse has been removed. It's not going based on algorithms. And I really am curious to see what you get with your Apple news. Because now you have, you have Apple added into the mix. So we've already talked about Twitter. We've already talked about YouTube, Facebook. And I think this is what's really disconcerting and why I want to talk about this and hopefully give you some time to digest this over the Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. As more of a libertarian who believes in limited government intervention, um, we are entering, though, into a new... Uh, time, a new time here where you have several companies that are more powerful than most first world nations. And think about this for a second. We were concerned about the Patriot Act. Remember that? Libertarian, liberals were really, it was more so an excuse for Code Pink to protest. Where are they lately or certainly after the Obama years? But we were all had a problem with the Patriot Act, libertarians, because we thought it was an invasion of privacy. And I still think that that's a problem. But I, I had ads popping up on my phone for uh, treatment for dogs dealing with lymphoma, and I didn't even search it on my phone. It was going based on some, uh, some supplements that I was bringing in from an Amazon app. So I don't even know how that happens. Think of how much, just how much Google, Apple, and YouTube obviously goes with Google, Facebook, Twitter. Think of how much they know about you. And then think of how silly it was for us to be concerned as to whether someone was from the NSA was listening to our Thanksgiving stuffing tips with, with paw paw if you're, if you're Elizabeth Warren, because that's apparently what the Native Americans, Redskins, is that what we, Redskins, Indians, that's what they say, paw paw. Um, congratulations, Elizabeth Warren. You're the, you're the whitest person in the world. I know plenty of Native Americans. They never use the term paw paw. But you just think of how concerned we used to be about our privacy, and now it's just something that we willfully give away for a little bit of convenience. You know, something else that really comes to mind here, people uh, complain about corporate money, right, and big oil and big pharma. Look at the biggest companies in the world. We've talked about this. Out of the top five, it depends. I think Amazon and, uh, and Apple sort of jockey for first position, but you have Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet, which is Google and YouTube. Those are in the top five, period across the globe. These are the most, the most powerful companies in the history of the world. And I mean this, no one comes close at all. All agree. They all come to the same political persuasion and they all have the ability to pinch the valve and close that, shut off the tap of information. And not, not just to you. This is why I think it bothers me so much when we, when we started doing this content on YouTube and you know, they used to call it new media, now it's just for, for Generation Z, it's just media. We thought, well, this is great. There aren't going to be the same gatekeepers that you have on television, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS. We thought, now anyone can have a show. And that was true. But now the gatekeepers are bigger than any of those networks. It's Google, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, Apple. They are the gatekeepers and they're more powerful than ABC or NBC or CBS could have been when people only had a few TV sets and an engine came on in the middle of the night going, oh, when the TV was off. That's just what happened. After 11 o'clock, the TV went off and it was an aboriginal doing, Aah. that's all it was. These companies are more powerful than any of them combined. And there's no oversight right now. There's no one keeping them accountable. And that's why two years ago, we released a video on the issues going on with Alexa, and by that Monday, I think it was released on a Wednesday or a Thursday, by Monday it changed. We released a video as it relates to Tulsi Gabbard, what's been going on with our search, and then YouTube changes search algorithms not all that long after. 
So I think it's most important here. Yeah, there's a lot, there are, there's a lot of good going on in the country. And I think we're making some great strides. But you can't become complacent. And uh, this is as much a request from you as it is hopefully a, a tool to inform you. If you don't send in your own experiments, your own screen grabs, upload them to YouTube, upload them to Twitter, I, you know, upload them as, I'll, I'll try and share whatever I can as long as we, you know, we do our due diligence and it's valid. Um, if you guys don't send that in and run these experiments yourself, like you did yourselves, like you did with Alexa, which is what changed policy, then all of this is for naught. But for some reason, people haven't been focusing on what's going on with Apple on your phone, which everybody has right now in, uh, in, in the modern world, or, or, or uh, an Android, but it's effectively the same thing. It's something that most people aren't talking about, and I think it's about as important as an issue gets in 2019, going into 2020, going into an election. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what you send. Happy Thanksgiving. I appreciate you taking the time. There weren't too many squeaks. Oh, Betty's, she didn't see, she just, there you go. She just ran around the corner and she's killing something. It's dead.